Hey guys, so this is going to be the second video in my How to Get Fast at Clock series. In this video, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to solve a clock just using the basic method. And then I'll kind of go through like the basics of no flip. It won't be a tutorial because I don't know enough on the method to give a tutorial. But then I'll talk for a minute about kind of why I don't use no flip, but why it might be beneficial to learn. Before you learn how to solve a clock, you need to know how to scramble one. So clock scrambles give you uh, which specific pin you're turning and then a number and then either a plus or a minus sign. So something like a UR means you're turning the top right pin. And then something like U would mean you're turning both with both the top pins up. And then something like R would mean both the right pins and so on for D and L, and then all means all the pins are up. And for these first four moves, it just means you're turning with one pin up only for each of the moves. And then the number after it is just telling you how many clicks you want to turn that specific move for. So a two plus means you're turning it two clicks clockwise or to the right, and then a five minus would mean you're turning it five clicks to the left or counterclockwise. And then you just do that for the entirety of the scramble. And then I like to check my scramble with the draw scramble function uh, down here. And one thing I forgot to mention is that after you're done with the moves, actually I forgot to mention two things. First of all, after you scramble one side, there's a Y2, which means you flip the clock over like this and then do those moves on the opposite side. And then afterwards, there's going to be just a bunch of letters with no moves afterwards. And that is just corresponding to which pins you put up after the scramble. So you can see this scramble has UL, which means just the top left pin is up. But if there was a scramble like this, that would mean like both the right pins are up. And so that's how that works. I also forgot to mention that if there's no letters after a scramble, that just means that none of the pins are up on that face, and they're all up on the opposite face. I also forgot to say that when you're scrambling, it doesn't matter which side you start on as long as 12 is at the top, and you want to make sure that 12 is at the top the entire time when you're scrambling. To actually solve your clock, uh, there's no algorithms, it's really simple, but you want to have a pin order, which basically means you just do the same moves in the same order like every time so that you don't have to think about oh what move am I going to do next you just know okay I'm going to have this pin up and I'm going to turn this dial next and then I'm going to have you know and so on and so on so what I do is I start with the top left pin up and I turn it so that the center aligns to the right edge and then I put the bottom right pin up so that I can align the center and the right edge to the top edge. And then I put the top right pin up so that I can align these three pieces to the bottom edge. And then I put both of the right pins up to align all of the edges and across. And that's the first step is to get across on one side and then solve it to 12 like that. And once you're done with that, you want to flip the clock over and unlike in scrambling where you flip the clock over like this you should flip the clock over like this because it's typically faster and then from there you just do the same thing typically the same moves in the same order align these two pieces align these two pieces with this piece then this to here and then all of that and once you have this, instead of solving it straight to 12, like on the other face, you actually want to start solving it to the corners. And so when you have three pins up and just one pin down, all of the pieces except for the corner by the pin that's down will move. And so you solve the corners by aligning all of the edges to the corner that's by the pin that's down. And I do that just in a counterclockwise circle. And this corner was already solved so I can skip it and then just go solve this corner and then this corner and then after that I just solve it to 12. You're turning the same dials in the same order every time you're just not turning them the same amount every time and so it's really easy and that's how you solve a clock. 
Now, in order to solve a clock with the no flip method, you basically memorize how to solve across to 12 on one side, but you turn from the other side. And so you would be turning with like the pins down so that you can do multiple moves at once. So maybe I, I can't do it. Uh, this is, is just basically how the method works. Uh, but you're turning this and you're solving across on this side with the down pins while solving the cross on this side with the up pins. And that's basically how it works to my understanding of it. And that's probably a little different to what someone like Caleb would use who is an actual really good no flip solver. Um, but that's just basically how that method works. So now I'm gonna explain kind of why I don't use it. One of the reasons why no flip might be beneficial to learn is because it is theoretically faster because you save time by not having to flip the clock over and you save time by doing multiple moves at once instead of just one move at a time. However, even though solvers like Caleb have proven that it can be a really fast method, so far it hasn't been like as fast as it possibly can be because a method being theoretically faster doesn't mean that people will actually be able to use it to be faster because, you know, human error plays a big role in things and no flip is a riskier method and it's harder to learn. And so I don't use it because of those reasons. You know, there would be a learning curve. And right now the most beneficial use of my practice time is to just keep practicing the way I'm practicing. And so switching to a different method would you know, make me a lot slower at that method and I would have to spend time catching up just to get back to the speed that I'm already at. And I don't want to spend time doing that, especially because I got pretty out of practice in the spring just because I got really busy with school. And so I'm going to continue not using no flip until someone like Caleb goes and starts averaging two seconds and like proves that it actually is something that you can use to be really fast, you know, even faster than the standard method because the standard method just has its own limitations that no flip is, again, theoretically not limited by. Um, but until then, I'm going to just stick with the standard method and keep getting faster at that rather than switching to a different method. All right, so that's all for this video. Uh, the next video is gonna be on how to practice to get fast um just some like practice tips and stuff but this outro is dedicated to my friend who specifically commented on my last video about that video not having an outro so this one gets an outro and also you couldn't see it because it was out of frame but i've been wearing the yaskar shirt this entire time and i just think that's funny <laughs>